What's Ready. up, everybody? Welcome to the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 56. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and today I am joined for the first time by Dim, a.k.a. Gifted Dim 63 Dim, thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Remember, guys, here. you can always catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma9011 every first and third Saturday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you can't catch it live, remember it goes on YouTube and SoundCloud the following week, broken up topic by topic, but also put as one big video and MP3 for your amusement. Um, from there, oh boy, now I'm blanking on the top or the intro. Oh yeah, SoundCloud already mentioned. We were talking about Extra Life free show. Extra Life is coming up, guys. November 30th. That's a Saturday this year, not Black Friday. So you can go do your shopping and then come back the next day and hang out with us. 24 hours trying to raise some money for the kids. Um, join us at 12 noon and we'll go for 24 hours playing games having a good time if you'd like to hang out there if you could help us out by spreading the word or anything you do would be greatly appreciated and then last but not least this podcast is brought to you guys by the merch store you can get all of your enigma 911 swag over there t-shirts cups backpacks and more rep the brand support us it'd be greatly appreciated oh it was half stretch half dab it was lady you just gotta get them in there okay whenever you can i don't know stupid you have stuff to. You have but... to. <laughs> so dim how you doing today I'm doing great, man. It's been a good day. Uh, Rhi and I got done with a, a stream where we carved some pumpkins earlier, and now we're here filming this podcast. Awesome. Very nice. Um, so, Dim, you do a podcast yourself about I movies, do. so you have a little bit of experience of chatting it out about your opinions and stuff like that. Sure. So my topic yep. today is about your opinion because I want to talk about Death Stranding. Um, now, <laughs> since this game has been announced... On Twitter, it seems like every time something happens, something's announced, some trailer's released, you're, oh my god, so excited. There's like all this hype and energy for it, and I love seeing it. I'm like very happy about it. Yeah. Death Stranding has been an interesting adventure for myself. <laughs> and an and enigma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... I was very excited and, I mean, confused like all of us when those first trailers dropped. Yep. Um, and, I don't know, I wasn't, like, sold on it, but, you know, I was intrigued because, obviously, it had that mystique factor to it. Um, and then we've seen gradually more trailers, obviously, and now we've seen gameplay. So I kind of want to just pick your brain about that because after seeing some footage myself, I'm a little undersold and not sure. really invested, I guess. So I guess my first question is, what's your excitement level for Death Stranding? Let's start with that. Well, my excitement <laughs> level is going to be above a 10 out of 10. I, I'm, I'm very excited for this game. Um, and I think most of that excitement comes from just knowing that Hideo Kojima's pedigree in the past has been flawless. Mm. If you look back on any of his games or any of the things that he's worked on, they've usually been critically acclaimed, like really high rated. All of his Metal Gear Solid games are above a 90% on Metacritic. He's got a, a really fascinating way of telling stories. And I think that with Death Stranding, it's so, we know so little about it. And I think that is where a lot of that intrigue is gonna come from. Yeah. Um, I think with that being said, like, we don't know a lot and that's i think i think that's what's drawing me the most to it because he's showing us just enough yeah. to where there's ultimately no spoilers at all like most of these movie trailers you'll see now it's just mm. like the entire movie all in one trailer you're like oh i guess i don't really need to go watch this movie now right. but anything we've seen from this game has been so cryptic and and unknown that it's just like I need to know for myself what this game is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what what is, I think, what is it that makes you so lukewarm on it in general? Have okay. you played the Metal Gear Solid games? Or so that, have you played any of his? That is a, exactly what I was going to go into. So I haven't played anything that Kojima's put out. Um, okay. Just Metal Gear never came into my spectrum until, like, sure now with other people playing it i'm like oh okay cool well i don't know what you're doing um yeah so i've never is really only metal gear his library or i would say that other stuff that is his like tentpole like yeah 
series. He's, okay. He, it's literally anytime you start up one of those games, it's like it'll say a Hideo Kojima game like in font. Mm -hmm. gotcha. <laughs> so I think playing those and knowing the stories of how intricate those games are mm -hmm. is telling to what his pedigree actually is. So gotcha. Okay. So yeah, I don't have any experience with his work personally. Um, and then I think just the big thing that kind of like was the final push of like, eh. Um, so they showed a lot of game play at Tokyo Game Show. So mm -hmm. I was up, Night Owl. So I had it on in the background. <laughs> yeah. And I just had it. And I was just like, so they had a lot of time to show stuff. Mm -hmm. And the first night, I believe they had like an hour or something like that. Yeah, it was like 52 minutes or something yeah. like that. So most of that, they showed you can stack a bunch of shit on his back. Let's pack mule this guy. Running around the you know the field, which looked nice. Getting caught in a river at one point. <laughs> yep, and then losing all yeah, of his, <laughs> like, <laughs> all his boxes. He's trying to get them. <laughs> and then the final 10 minutes was like the only intriguing part to me. There was the sneaking around the camp, which I related it to Far Cry. And then he attacked some big, or was fighting some big shadow monster. And I was like, oh okay that's yeah. cool the rest of it i was just like what 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 are we doing then you move to night two mm -hmm. and i feel like they had another hour as well but i don't know yeah it was it was like 40 minutes or something mm -hmm. yeah it was crazy so that one was just entirely in that little space room mm -hmm. hangout that he's got and don't get me wrong the things that were showing like technically were very impressive like all the facial animations and stuff like that but that was yep. like pretty much most of it was like you can stare at his junk and now you can move his face in different ways and you can make a funny pose and i'm just like <laughs> why <laughs> what, do I, what i don't so that was my tipping point of like i, I maybe it's just not for me i don't know sure. so yeah <laughs> i think in um you know going back into how Kojima does his trailers, or at least done his trailers for this game, is I believe that we're seeing a lot of mundane activities in the game because he's purposely not showing us like the intense moments of the story. He wants right. us to experience that. Sure. And then if you look at anybody who's um, like covered the game in media and you know over websites and stuff, they're talking about how the people, early people who have played the game, who are saying that it's it's an experience it's something that you have to feel and you you almost feel like you're living as um the character right that you mm -hmm. play as so i think that when we when we see what we're what kojima wants us to see that's only like a small one percent of what this game is going to be mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of walking because he's not he's 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 avoiding everything <laughs> that yeah may look important mm -hmm. so I think in addition to that, he did show us that there's going to be fighting, but he's already told us that this is a delivery game, right? We're mm -hmm. going from one, potentially one part of the of America to the other side to, right. to deliver something important. Now, obviously, I don't know what it is. I haven't played it. So mm -hmm. um, just speculating off of that, yeah, you're going to be walking around or you're going to be maneuvering across these planes or wherever he's at. Mm hmm but I mean, there's that's not going to be the entire game. Yeah, like, you're, you're going to see other things. You're going to meet characters, however you meet them. The characters are some of his his biggest parts in any of the Metal Gear games. Like all the bosses that you meet in all these games, they're all very uh, specific. So I think that the very first eight minute trailer he showed for this game, we got a, a feeling for like maybe five to eight of these characters. He did a little snapshot of who these people could be right and i think that that is that those characters are going to be the important characters whether they're the boss fights or whatever is happening something about those characters is going to mean something by the end of this game mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know i mean like i totally agree with everything you're saying like don't show too much have that mystique mm -hmm. factor obviously yeah that's a selling point I think the big thing that just is a hang-up for me, if people were already invested, like yourself and other people, you don't really need much more to sell you. You're already like, let's go. For me, the guy way out here on the outside, 
these do nothing for me like i feel like he need well not he needed but there should have been some kind of more of like a sales pitch in a way like why should sure. i care why should i play this game that was my big thing i guess that i was just missing <clears throat> i think i mean i don't think you're alone in that boat though i think that the kojima fans are going to play this game no matter what it's a hard sell and i think it's going to be a hard sell for a lot of people who don't know his pedigree or, and they don't know the metal gear saw games they're going to all have issues with this game mm -hmm. so i think that I, I foresee this game being very divis divisive between people because I think it's going to go super fan one direction and then people who never played any of the other stuff that he's done in an, in the opposite direction. That's going to like really hurt the ratings in this game, and I think it's going to potentially create a problematic future for anything else that he decides to put out. But mm -hmm. I applaud him regardless for being so experimental because this is – a game that I still two weeks before it comes out there's I, I really don't know what what's happening in this game yeah. <laughs> like that that is impressive alone like he's showed us barely anything even from the 45 minute to the hour long previews that we've seen we saw uh the main character Sam Bridges he's out there like peeing on bushes yeah. like <laughs> I, I was like what what kind of mechanics is this like is this really what we're gonna be doing but I believe that the story is going to make up for it. Mm -hmm. I think that the story is going to be something that nobody expects. Gotcha. Okay, well, that will kind of flow right into my next question. Do you have any guesses or theories, I guess, of what the story could part be telling, I guess, or how it would go? <laughs> That's what gameplay we need, peeing physics. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... From what I've gathered so far, he's a delivery person. He has met the whoever this president female is, mm -hmm. who, who looks like she had maybe been diagnosed with an illness, is going to be dying, is passing on her legacy to somebody else. She tasks him to do something where he has to deliver some really important something to from one side of the America to the other side. What we don't know is how how broken America has become in this future that they live in and why there's not a whole lot of people out there. Why is there a lot of nature coming back? There's no building structures really. I, I don't know, but it, I mean, from what I gather, that's, I, I don't know how the other characters are going to play into it. It seems like there's going to be some kind of connection to the afterlife. He's got the little like, yeah, uh, light thing that lets him see, people who are dead right for whatever reason i don't know but and also the baby he's carrying also i guess is supposed to help with the whole dead thing and mm -hmm. being able to do something with the afterlife i don't i don't know <laughs> but all right um so we have quite a few recognizable actors and actresses in this uh yes obviously norman reedus we got uh mads mickelson and then I'm blanking on the other people, but I can picture them. Yep. Um, do you have any wild predictions of maybe another person in this game that they just haven't announced? If you think well, there'll be anybody. <laughs> I mean, I think he's put a, a ton of people in this game. We just saw recently Conan O'Brien is going to be a character. We saw that. Oh, that was legit? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's okay. legit. Yeah, that's legit. I thought they were real. doing one of the bits where they just kind of like, whoop, green screen no. in or something. Yeah, he's in it. <laughs> Um, uh, and I, I think that he always likes to put himself in his game. So I feel like he's in there somewhere. Okay. Uh, but I totally believe that there's going to be people we don't know or expect mm -hmm. for Any, sure. Anybody you'd like to see in there specifically or no? Honestly, I'd be happy with anybody from what I've seen. I'm happy with the, the main characters that we've already looked at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I think Norman Reedus was a perfect pick. I think that his kind of I don't I don't know how to call his personality, but his like really laid back personality is gonna fit to whatever they're trying to tell here. Hmm. All right. Um hmm. let's see. Okay. Doubt it. Based on Konami stuff. 
<laughs> do you think there is any chance that this will somehow intertwine to the Metal Gear universe at all? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not not even just from a uh, from a logistical standpoint. I think that he like Konami and Kojima like had a breakup. Yeah. They're I like they're not trying to do anything with each other anymore. But even if they were, and even if he could use Metal Gear, I don't think he would. He might put like a reference, but he wouldn't put like anything that connects the two stories. He's not that type of uh, story story creator. Mm -hmm. So I I think that this could be the start of a new franchise. This could be the new Metal Gear. There could be more of these. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he would bring anything prior to that back gotcha. in. Because I know that uh, he was going to try to use Norman Reedus for uh, PT before, or Silent Hills before he broke up with Konami. Mm, yep, yep, I remember that. So at least he got to keep Norman on for Death Stranding, so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, so when does the game come out? You said two weeks? Yeah, November 8th. November 8th, all right. And your boy is going to buy <laughs> a digital copy, and I got the collector's edition. Oh, there you go. Keep it nice yeah. and pristine. I need, to have, I need to have the little baby thing. <laughs> are you going to stream it at all, or are you just going to keep that to yourself? I, I, I would like to stream it, mm -hmm. but I also I don't feel like it's something that I would want to spoil for anybody jumping into it. Gotcha. So I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence on if I want to stream it or not. Mm-hmm. If you stream it, are you going to wear the baby thing? Of course. <laughs> I right. would have to. I would have to wear the baby. <laughs> that would be a must. Nice. All right. Well, I think that wraps up my Death Stranding topic. So thank you for that. And, uh, no worries. Yeah, we'll see in two weeks how it goes. Oh, I can't wait. Maybe I'll try it out. Maybe I'll just watch. <laughs> we'll go I mean, honestly, I think that in your position yep. uh, to kind of end this topic off, I think that. If you're so far on the fence that you really have no real interest in playing it or even buying it day one, I think you should absolutely wait and check out what other streamers are doing and um, wait till you get more of an essence on what the story is, at least to kind of ensure that you would want to play this game and coming from a background that doesn't have any knowledge of his previous titles. So Right. Yeah. yeah. If it's got, like I said, if it's got those stealth, like I mentioned, Far Cry-esque type areas, like if it's something like that, and yeah, I'm just delivering this thing from here to here with a intricate shadow realm story, yeah, that might be up my alley. <laughs> so, Absolutely. I mean, from a technical standpoint alone, this game looks like it's going to oh. blow a lot of things out of the water. Absolutely. For sure. So I'm excited. Nice. All right, so I think that wraps up topic one. So, Dim, it is now your turn. What is your topic, sir? So, um, I was going back and forth in my head. I had two topics that we had discussed earlier, but I think uh, I'm, I'm going to hone in on the topic that I chose from actually Regave to me. She uh, wanted to talk about traveling, and and for me being in the military, and I've had an opportunity to travel all over the world. I've lived in korea for a year i lived in tokyo for three years i've traveled to sydney on vacation i've been to beijing i've climbed the great wall i climbed mount fuji um i've been to afghanistan obviously that wasn't a great place to be <laughs> but uh i've had an opportunity to really experience other cultures and know what how other people live and it's very different from what we do in america and i think that this is going to be multi-part Mm -hmm. uh, of a question but first let's let's figure out if you've traveled and we can go off of that gotcha so i have not traveled outside of the united states okay so i've gone down the east coast to florida driving i've stopped obviously florida i have some family in the carolina so i've stopped there the rest are just driving i've been to california numerous times texas okay. recently or well rtx but yeah recent uh colorado Austin. and the chicago got stuck in so we'll count that <laughs> so um given the opportunity do you think that you would travel Ooh, okay so this is the thing lady and i've talked about quite a bit because she wants to travel outside um it's never been a thing that's been like 
like a call to me like oh i really want to do this um recently and it's for a silly reason recently i have i've you mentioned tokyo i want to go over there but this (laughs) it's silly because it's only for disneyland really (laughs) <laughs> I just want to go to Tokyo I've Disney been, <laughs> and check that I've actually, out. Speaking of Disney, like I've only been to Tokyo Disney. I haven't been oh, to Disney in the States. Okay. So it's, I have a weird <laughs> I have a weird experience okay. with Disney Disney parks. Okay. So. Yeah, because I've been to World numerous times and I okay. absolutely love it. And then I've been to land three times. Yeah. Twice when I was living out there and then one recently because we we're out there for a wedding and just said, fuck it, let's drive down um so yeah just obviously experiment or seeing what the differences are there and just experiencing that that would be amazing and obviously tokyo's got like a big game culture so i'd love to explore their shops and i know i want to see what their fighting game community is like like i'm very into well i'm very into (laughs) i'm into the fighting game community but i suck at fighting games so it's like oh i just want to kind of see what that's like out there and see how their arcades are and stuff like that it's it's just what you would imagine it to be sweet (laughs) it's if if you go down to akihabara which is like obviously the electric city that's where the you know all the gamer stuff is electronics you can get computer parts they got anime figurines they Mm -hmm. got anime manga books everything you can imagine from like this one little strip of tokyo it's just full of all that stuff sweet um, but the, but you talked about arcades and it's just like, we, they have multi-tier arcades they are in like, you know, five, six story buildings and each floor will be designed to a certain type of game. So there'll be okay. like a dance a, or a music floor and it'll have like dance games or like the little, uh, uh I don't even know what to explain them, but they, it's like a touch music game. That oh you can yeah. Play. Okay. Um, and then there's floors that are designed for fighting games and they're all set up in like rows uh-huh. and then on the other row uh, on like across from you is the person you're fighting yeah so the you cabin can't, you mm-hmm. can't look at them <laughs> yep. but they're looking at like they're playing right in front of you it's it's nuts awesome um so yeah that would be my biggest like interest so like i said there hasn't been like i need to do this but there's been a couple places like oh that would be neat um yeah tokyo being one and then kind of south korea just because the taekwondo background would just be like interested to see what that's like Yep. um very similar yeah. to, to tokyo well yeah. go, going into like seoul and um the bigger cities of, of south korea they're very similar to japan mm. um not a lot of technical differences to to both areas but i mean obviously korea is a lot smaller so mm-hmm. yeah so those are the only ones that have caused interest but yeah <laughs> so um i think with that then I kind of I, I mentioned this earlier, but do you think that people, not just in America but everywhere in the world, should go out of their comfort zone and go to other countries? Hmm. I mean, I feel I have to say yes. <laughs> you don't. Um, you don't have no, to. No, I know. I know. Yeah. Um. I think they should. But I'm struggling as to be like, you should do this because this. Like, okay, I think you should just to similar to uh there's a phrase shoes person shoes walking, walking yeah well, thank you yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> just to kind of like yeah get that view of it because yeah it's so yeah. easy to just be over here and be like right. oh everything's bleh over there everything's great or whatever i think i talked about it on um yes, uh, because the kind shoes. of <laughs> the game over greggy show when i was on there yeah. i mean we were talking about gun violence or kind of went gun violence but yeah you guys went into some serious topics (laughs) yeah i was like i'm just here okay (laughs) um but it started off the topic was originally would you leave the uh, america to live somewhere else and i think very similar yeah and i think i mentioned i was like well it's always easy to just be like oh the grass is greener on the other side kind of thing so like it's hard to say yes or no to i guess if moving wise purpose um for visiting, I think, yeah, it would be, I think it should, yes. At least one place. I'm not saying you got to bounce up over oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. And, yeah, it's got its challenges. I know a friend of mine recently, like maybe past couple months, he went to France by himself. Okay. And I was like, wow. whoa, shit, okay. 
like to me that blew my mind because he was only packing like a backpack also i was like dude you're Uh-oh. nuts <laughs> i can't do that <laughs> that's, that's impressive though. yeah for sure very cool um and i mean he loved it he had a blast going over there so i mean obviously it can be a positive experience uh as i can see so yeah i think so like i said just to kind of put yourself out there so uh well going back to the benefits of traveling Mm -hmm. do you think that um do you feel like it's important to understand a culture from a different country yes and that i think that's my biggest like hang up of why to travel just like me going there like not obviously being out of my element like right i want to be respectful to Mm -hmm. the people there because obviously it's their home i can't just be like okay hello i'm here now so like adjusting to everything and making sure i'm doing things proper or using proper phrases or whatever it is like that's my biggest hang up and for sure i mean like i don't care your culture creed religion whatever like as long as you're a nice person you're treating people how they want to be treated and you're not hurting anybody mm-hmm. you do you so like i have no hang-ups there like oh i'm not gonna go there because they believe xyz or yep. whatever um so yeah absolutely i think we should respect other people's cultures and stuff like that and i think that's important that people have them <laughs> i think um in reference to traveling outside of the country i think that a lot of people get hung up with the money Mm. i think that a lot of people aren't willing or able to spend money on a two-day or a three-day trip to somewhere that they're unfamiliar with and on top of that i think there's a compound uh terror with potentially not knowing their language or the language barrier right you're you're not i think it's easy to travel from like here to somewhere like england or australia right. where they speak a variant of what we already know um i went to i traveled to bali on my own indonesia mm-hmm. but a lot of them spoke english and i traveled to sydney on my own just on vacation and uh, obviously they all spoke english as well but even when you think that they speak like or you think you could understand them it's still difficult because you're not used to that dialect right and uh, i remember just walking around or try to get trains and stuff and it's just like you feel that slight tension every time you go somewhere and i think maybe if i would have been with somebody it's always a little bit easier if you have like an extra body so do you think that if you were able to travel outside of the country that you could do it on your own, or do you think you would have to go with somebody else? Ooh. Okay. (laughs) Um, I'm asking all the toughies. Yeah. I mean, this is great. This is good. Um, I think I would definitely go with someone. I don't think I could do it on my own in a way. Like I could for sure, but like, I wouldn't like it (laughs) for a while. Um, See, the thing about me is I like to plan everything in a way. So if I was going by myself, I would have to have like everything listed out. Okay, I'm going here for sure. Then I'm doing this. Then I'm doing that. Like, I don't know. I sometimes do a very poor job of just like live in the moment kind of stuff where you go out and just whatever happens, happens. So I feel because everything would be so out of my element just because everything's brand new yeah that would freak me out by myself <laughs> so i think i would have to go with someone else <laughs> uh, i mean that's that's very similar to me and uh i mean you can ask re like i i literally have to plan everything to the t and if if a plan doesn't go correctly mm-hmm. i start freaking out and it's just like a, a it's like an inherent stressor when i know that something may not go the way i planned it to even if it even if it's like the day of, of something and let's say uh, we can't make a bus tour or something like I'm like, oh, shit, like yeah. <laughs> now we don't have two hours to spend on this. I got to go figure out how we're supposed to get around now. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just I really like and that's really important, I think, to when you're if, if you ever travel by yourself is having something to planned out, at least even having backup plans to when you're going and doing something, because you never know if 
it's going to rain that day or right. if you're going to need, I don't know, something or a car or, or whatever, an Uber or something like that. You got to figure out all these side stories. And as long as you have a plan, I think that traveling by, by yourself is totally doable. For sure. So I'll flip a question on you then because you just okay. listed off a bunch of places, which I had no idea you'd been to. Did yep. you have a favorite place that you went to visited whether uh, it was work or vacation? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think that it's the easy answer is Tokyo, right? Okay. Um, being a gamer, having nerd culture is like I've grown up with this stuff my whole life. Um, going to Tokyo was like a dream of mine since I was young, and for the for the military to actually want to send me to the place that I wanted to go, like mm -hmm. <laughs> that never happens. Right. And a lot of the times, like our our base selection is randomized like we'll be at a base and not even know where we're going until like three months before we're supposed to leave mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like all right now you got orders you got to go to this place but i knew that i was going to go there after i went to korea um and i was i was ecstatic and that's part of the reason why i re-enlisted the the first time because they had told me i got orders to korea but then i now you get to pick a new place and go to Japan. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Tokyo is definitely at the top of my list for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, everything I love is is basically out of there. But um, a close second is Sydney. Okay. Um, both cities are extremely clean. Very, very nice people. Sydney has a the fittest community I've ever seen. Like, there's a... <laughs> there's a gym on like every corner of every street it seemed like um just overall my experiences in both places were incredible like and both cities have something to do at all hours of the day you could be in an arcade for eight hours you could be going to a, a famous landmark or the l listening to history or going to museums or temples or like literally anything you could think of is in both of those cities. And for those reasons, I think that those would be at the top of my list. Nice. Uh, I had something. Oh, okay. <clears throat> kind of same, similar question, but opposite side of the spectrum. Have you ever gotten stuck anywhere? Stuck how? So my friend is part of the is in the navy and did that, and he was stationed over in Australia for a while. Wow, and there lucky was him. yeah, <laughs> so there was all the some political hubbub. So he ended up getting stuck there an extra three months. So he was supposed to be back home in June, and then get home until September because of that. Um, so any experiences like that that you were maybe stuck in a place for a while? I think the only place that I've been stuck like technically is um uh when i went to my deployment in afghanistan they had us fly into basically you're supposed to fly into like a hub country which mm -hmm. is usually a safer country where there we have bases that will charter people to the the harsher areas so um all throughout the middle east there's places um the united Ara arab emirates is one and a couple other places. But for me, my first place was uh, this place called Manas, which which is in Russia. Okay. And it's like I, I flew into a blizzard and they're like I had to wait just a short week in this place, just waiting for my flight to get to Afghanistan. And uh, I think that's probably the only time I've ever been really stuck, but it wasn't even that long. So, mm. OK. Yeah. But I mean, oh. I wouldn't say I was stuck, <laughs> but I did get uh, scared when I was coming back from Sydney. I had to fly through Shanghai, and they told me that uh, my flight was delayed till the next day, so I had to stay a day. And I just took a random bus to some like sketchy hotel. Mm. <laughs> the hotel had like uh, cracks in the wall and it was just like really dirty and dingy. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to get me back to my place, <laughs> but I, I had no choice. So I had to stay there. Right. And, uh, it was just a day, but like, I mean, a day in a country that you don't know anything, you don't know anybody, you don't have like your regular phones and stuff. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it was a super scary experience too. Mm -hmm. Um, 
when I went to Bali, I ended up losing my debit card because I left it in a uh, machine. I was freaking out. I like call my parents and and wire money through Western Union mm-hmm. just to have enough money to make it through the rest of my trip. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's stuff like that that you learn from, though, and mm-hmm. I think that it's all part of the experience. And then obviously, if you go with somebody, then um, it's it's a lot easier to manage. Right. Um, there's always somebody that you you always feel that comfort of having a, a friend or multiple friends that you're with. And I totally think that I wish like traveling would be mandatory, even if it was just for a day or two to get out of the country, even if it was to go to Mexico or Canada, like even simply crossing either one of our borders, I think would be beneficial to anybody just to see somebody else's culture because we're, we're so culturally like saturated by all these different cultures in our country that we think it's the same when we leave and it's not right and i think it's important that even if we went to england that they live completely different like (laughs) they have a queen we we don't have that like it's just i think it's very beneficial to see that type of stuff yeah yeah you mentioned how they're so similar with the language barrier like everybody would think Oh yeah, that's gonna be the most similar. But yeah, like you mentioned, it's got s- their differences. So that would even be like, oh, ooh, okay, my bad. <laughs> yep. Even um, even like the friends that I have in the kind of funny community that are from England, like they have slang sometimes, and you'll be like, what? What did you say? <laughs> and oh yeah, you guys don't have that slang. And or they'll they'll be like, what does this and this mean mm-hmm. in English, like or American? And it's just like, oh yeah, you guys don't know about that. Like right. Yeah, it's very interesting. Going off that point, like I've never really actually sat down and thought about it. it. Just like light bulb moment in my head when you mentioned that, like when people came over for kind of funny live or prom, like mm-hmm. how, like just knowing, like what did they feel, <laughs> like what yeah, did they exactly. notice, like whoa, all right. <laughs> very, it's very, it's it's interesting and also eye opening because you don't. This isn't something we normally think about. We don't wake up thinking, okay, uh, how does an English person react to this situation? Like their whole upbringing and the way that they do things is just different Mm -hmm. from the breakfast that they eat to the, to how their day is planned to what they can do throughout the day. Like it's all, it's, it's very interesting to me. And I think that I, I, that's one of the things that I cherish about having my air force career and and ending it the way I did, because I've gotten a, a chance to go to a lot of places I've seen a lot of cultures, um, and I wouldn't trade that. Even as harsh as some of the times that I've had to experience were, I would never trade it, and I, I would I would do it again. So, all right. I think you got one more question, then I'm all burnt out. But uh, long flights, how do you deal with those? Because that's another thing I'd worry about. <laughs> oh man, I I had to fly from um, Tokyo the long way so oh geez so i went from tokyo to afghanistan but i flew the opposite direction <laughs> so i had to go through the states through europe through what the uh, f- russia and then down to afghanistan so okay <laughs> uh that was basically i think two or two and a half days of of just flying uh-huh so in order to deal with that i think if you're gonna if you're going on a long plane ride um if you can <laughs> If you can get into a, a, a higher or uh, a better chair, then that's always a positive. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of those chairs recline if you're going overseas. Uh, if not, then I would recommend taking some melatonin or taking a sleep aid and trying to sleep most of the way. But you're not going to be able to do it because like eight to ten hours, you're going to wake up eventually. Right. So have something like a switch or... Um, most of those long distance flights have TVs on them. So mm-hmm. there's a bunch of movies and stuff you can watch. Or maybe uh, if you're going with a group of people to play like some kind of card games or something to keep each other occupied. Yeah. yeah that's another big worry. I mean, mine, usually a knockout on flights, but I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's, it's almost instant for me. And, and I don't always need sleep aid because like, it's something about the, the, the bumpy motion that I'm just like, Oh, oh I got to <laughs> I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> I know Rita's the same thing. She'll sleep like sitting on the couch right here. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> she's the quickest sleeper I've ever seen. Hmm. Nice, but yeah. 
I think that's all I got for that. Cool. All right. So if this is your first time watching the podcast, whenever I have a guest on for the first time, I like to take them to the lightning round of questions. So, Dim, I'm going to take you through some questions. Just whatever answer comes to your head first, go with it. And uh, any answer you want to elaborate on, feel free to. Or if you just want to. Uh, so are we, are we looking for one word answers? No, or... no, no. Just whatever pops to your head first answer okay wise. yeah yeah so like i said you can elaborate as much as you want or you just leave it at the answer that's totally up to you and i gotta i'm find gonna shoot it. from the hip there you go pow there they <laughs> <go>. <laughs> all right you ready to go ready all right favorite color uh, red okay cats or dogs dogs okay favorite game metal gear solid okay favorite movie friday uh favorite type of music rap hip-hop favorite song uh, uh shoot i don't have one <laughs> what's my favorite song babe i don't know <laughs> uh pass <All> right. <laughs> uh what was your dream job when you were a kid I wanted to be a uh, uh, actually I wanted to be a cop like my mom, but now I'm far from not wanting to be that. Oh, okay, I didn't know your mom was a cop. That's awesome. Yeah, actually, prison guard. Okay. Whoa. Tough. Yep. <laughs> yep. Don't mess with Dim's mom. <laughs> uh, if you could have any animal to be a pet, what would it be? Penguin. Sweet. Uh, if you could meet one celebrity, regardless of status, who would it be? Drake. Uh, favorite season? Spring. Okay. Favorite holiday? Oh, man. Um, I'd probably say either Halloween or Thanksgiving. Okay. What is a skill you wish you could have? I wish I had a better memory. Mm, okay. Interesting. What is a game that you would like me to play? Metal Gear Solid. Okay. <laughs> nice. <sighs> so, yeah, that's it. Nice job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And actually, on. With, um, with my favorite color, I would probably say it's a combination between red and black. Okay. But uh, I just I was trying to go fast, and yeah. I think I, red just came out. It's all good. <laughs> that's yeah. the point lightning round <laughs> yep that's it i'm glad i i'm glad i uh, made it through nice well guys this has been another episode of the wait what we're we talking about podcast episode 56 my name is brett aka enigma 911 and today i was joined by dim aka gift to dim 63 dim thank you very much for being on the show today hopefully we thank can get you. you on again maybe with re and toe we'll see yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure she would like to be on here nice uh, remember, guys, you can catch the podcast live every first and third Saturday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash Enigma9011. Um, you can join in on the conversation today like that, Evan Jordan and Lady in Wonderland did today. Um, if you have any topics for the show, just let us know in the comment section down below. Maybe we'll get to it next time. Uh, if you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. -okay. Go over to YouTube.com, search Enigma9011, where it's broken up topic by topic and put as one big video the following week. And you can also check it out, us out over on SoundCloud. Also search Enigma9011 where you can check it out on or the audio, the MP3 version for yourself. Um, if you, no, not if you, this podcast is brought to you guys by the merch store. You can get all of your Enigma9011 swag over there, t-shirts, cups, backpacks, and more. Uh, rep the brand, support us, it'd be greatly appreciated. And then last but not least, remember Extra Life is coming up November 30th, 24 hours of games to help out the kids. Uh, be chaos as always we've got 12 hours with the whole crew and then the next 12 hours just myself possibly lady in one lane and toe unless she's passed out on the couch again like last time <laughs> we'll see um but yeah lots of games halo 3 we've got the extra life tournament coming up once again i gotta defend my belt and then we'll go from there but uh yeah dim anything that you would like to plug for yourself good sir uh yeah so you can find me at gifted dim 63 on pretty much anything social media video games it's pretty much the same uh, if you want my switch code, you'd have to get it from me because I don't memorize it. <laughs> um, if you like watching movies, me and my wife, Rhiannon, have a movie review show that we put up on podcast services uh, all over the place. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll get updates with that. And in addition, I also have a merch store uh, that would be 
hashtag swagdojo.bigcartel.com. And um, I think that's it. Twitch.tv slash giftedim 63 Check that out, that's too. It. <laughs> that's it. All right, guys. Thank you for watching today. Hope you guys have a good one and take care.